What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing five things with you that I wish I had known before I started coding. Now, I've seen a few other YouTubers who've done videos on this topic, and I wanted to put my own twist on things. So in this video, the five things that I'm gonna be sharing are things that you've never heard of before, except probably the first one. You've probably heard the first one. Also, typically my videos are at least 12 minutes, usually even more than 15 minutes. I wanted to switch things up a bit, because you know my middle name is The Experimenter, Clement The Experimenter Mihailescu. So in the spirit of living up to my middle name, I want to do an experiment and make this video very short and sweet, bite-sized if you will, so I'm going to try to keep it under five minutes. Spoiler alert, I went over five minutes. Okay, so the first thing that I wish I had known before I started coding, and this is the one that you've probably heard of before, but it's always good to hear it again, is that there is no age past which it's too late to start to learn how to code. If you're in middle school right now watching this video and you want to start to learn how to code, great, that's a great time to start. If you just started college and you're worried that you've never coded in your life before and can you start to learn how to code, don't worry, that's a great time to start. If you just graduated from college and you never did coding in college or before that, don't worry, that's a great time to start. That's when I started. If you just turned 30, ugh, that might be a bit too late at that point. No, 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 no. If you just turned 30, that's a great time to start. If you just turned 40, 50, 60, whatever age you are, it is a great time to start to learn how to code. You don't need that much to start to learn how to code. You just need a bit of passion and a bit of grit. The second thing I wish I had known when I started to learn how to code has to do with what operating system to pick when you're learning how to code. I remember when I was starting my coding journey, I was really stressed out because I kept reading these articles or hearing some people telling me, listen, if you don't go with Mac OS, you're gonna have a really hard time. Everything else is garbage next to Mac OS, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm about to dispel the myth for you right now. If you're just starting out coding, there are three main operating systems that you can pick from. There's Windows, there's Mac OS, and there's some variation of Linux. Let's go with Ubuntu, for example. You can use whichever one you want, whichever one is most convenient to you, and it won't affect you that much. All three of them have a small downside, which I'll go over right now, but overall, it's not a big deal. For Windows, the downside is that most coding tutorials online are typically done on Macs or on Linux machines, so it's a bit harder to follow. Most programming tools out there are typically really tailored for Mac OS or for Linux, so it's a little bit harder to sometimes get things to work on Windows, so you might need just to have a little bit more patience and a little bit more willingness to look around the web to figure out how to get things to work on Windows. That's it. With Linux, the downside is going to be that Linux is a little bit sketchy in the sense that if something goes wrong with with your computer, like the computer as a whole, you're kind of on your own to figure out how to make it work. I would know because I dual booted Windows and Ubuntu for the first two and a half years of my programming career. And then finally, the downside of Mac OS is that, well, you're using Mac OS. Seriously, does anybody actually like Finder? The third thing I wish someone had told me about when I started coding was how loosely the term API is used in the industry. Like, Seriously, people use API for everything. I think the best way to explain what an API is to a beginner is to say that an API is basically the blueprint or the instructional manual that defines how you interact with a thing. So for instance, if you've got a front-end component for a button, literally a button that you put on a website, and you can plop that button in a bunch of different places, and maybe you can specify the button's color or the action that's gonna happen when someone clicks on the button. That's the API of the button. The color that you can specify and the action that you can specify for the button, those two things constitute the API for that button or for that front-end component. If you've got a back-end service, like for instance, take Twitter that supports functionality to post tweets, to comment on tweets, to retweet tweets. All of these functionalities are things that you can achieve by interacting with some sort of backend service in a specific way. For instance, for a tweet, you probably have to hit an endpoint and pass a specific type of data, like for instance, 200 words or 200 characters or however long a tweet is. You can tell I don't use Twitter that much. And all of those things that define how you use these functionalities 
are the API for the Twitter backend service. When you're cooking something and you've got a recipe, that recipe is sort of like the API for the dish that you're cooking. When you're watching one of my videos and you know that you have to smash the like button, otherwise the universe isn't going to be happy, that's an API for watching Clement Mihalescu's YouTube videos. But seriously, the term AP- Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Really, Siri? But seriously, the term API is used extremely loosely in the industry. Be ready for it. Number four, I wish that when I was starting to learn how to code, someone had told me about AlgoExpert.io. Just kidding, I just needed a way to plug in my company, AlgoExpert. If you're preparing for your coding interviews, check out AlgoExpert.io, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. The real number four is that I wish that when I was starting to learn how to code, someone had told me once and for all that there is no difference between a software developer and a software engineer. Those two titles are the same thing. I remember being genuinely confused about this when I was looking into coding boot camps and some of them were saying that they were preparing you for a developer role, others were saying that you were going to be prepared to be a software engineer, and I was like, is a software engineer more legit than a software developer? No. No, 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 no. Repeat after me. No. No, 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 no. One of you is going to comment down below, no, 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 with the right number of no's, and you're going to get a heart from me, and you're going to get, like, 200 plus likes. But seriously, software developers, software engineer, they're the same thing. Where things get a little bit different is when you start to specialize, like, for instance, if you say back-end engineer or front-end engineer, those are just software engineers or software developers that specialize in one part of the stack. And by the way, even there, web developer is basically a front-end engineer. Typically these days, if you say that you're a front-end engineer, that means that you are working on the front-end, and typically we're talking about the web here, therefore you are a web developer. The fifth and final thing that I wish someone had told me when I was starting to code is that there is no best programming language to learn. Seriously, I hear people all the time talking about the best programming languages. Whatever programming language you started with, if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you feel like you're learning, it's really good. There is no best programming language. Apart from, I guess, maybe JavaScript. JavaScript, I guess, would be the best programming language because, you know, it's both on the front end, the back end, it's really versatile. So I guess, aside from JavaScript, there is no best programming language. And I guess Python would come in as a close second because, you know, machine learning and data science. So I guess if you put aside JavaScript and Python, then there really is no best programming language. I guess Golang would come in as a close third one because, I mean, you know, Google and it's also versatile. And I guess C++ after that because it's really fast. Certainly not Java. I mean, we're not here to, like, hurt ourselves, right? And then I guess PHP. That's going to be it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about these five things in the comments below, and let me know if you enjoyed this shorter format for a video, and if you even remotely chuckled at any point in time during this video, you owe me a smashing of the like button. I'm talking to you, the lurkers, here, because even in one of my recent videos where I had like 30,000 views and we had 3,000 people who smashed the like button, that means that 90% of you did not smash the like button, and I refuse to believe that 90% of you did not enjoy that video. So if you think that you're too good to smash the like button, that used to be me. I used to be one of those people who didn't smash the like button on any YouTube video. I used to never do that. I was like, yeah, I'm just a lurker. I just consume content. I don't smash the like button. No longer. It ends today with this video. What am I doing with my life?